What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and I'm joined by Nick today, and we are here to talk about the tips and tricks of Horizon Zero Dawn. So we're going to kind of go through the game a little bit, um, talk about things that we think you should know when playing it, whether you're a beginner or have played for a little while. Um, we kind of wanted to try to stick to the important ones. Right, yeah. We want to make it as, as much like non-obvious things as possible. Um, we don't want to give you things that we know that you already know. So they'll kind of be, they, they could be things you know, and we understand that, but just bear with us. Maybe they're things that other people don't know. May or may not apply to the very first tip, which is to turn your freaking HUD off the always on setting it starts you on to dynamic. Right. Make sure so you also have the waypoints on are uh, set to off, but this just makes it like a lot of other games where your HUD, like, fades out and disappears when you're not using it. Right. Which, there's no downside to that other than you get to see more of the beautiful world of Horizon Zero Dawn. Exactly. No negative to that. No. Right, like, I mean, this so, game has a lot going on on screen, both HUD and non-HUD, and if you turn it off uh, when you're not doing things, like Nick said, you can, it just makes it, you just see more of the screen at once, which... People are really into that kind of stuff for like open world games too, and so it's, I'm yeah, glad that. Yeah, really like to see the screen. It's interesting. So tip number two is when you go anywhere. Um, I mean, there's a lot of merchants in this game. They're uh, like at the at big cities, even small like uh, small settlements with quests and whatever. You go to them and they sell they sell treasure maps. Um, and these help you find like an assortment of things in the game, things whether it be for trophy sake, if you know you have to collect basically everything um, for trophies, uh, and then it also just helps you you know get certain collectibles in the game, whether it be collectibles or uh, you know different things to help your character out. Um, I'd also even go even further, like get all the sample boxes. Everybody has the free sample box, yeah. and they have all sorts of stuff in them. So, like, why not? Try to get one from each merchant. Yeah. Free stuff, man. Okay, tip number three is about weapon status effects. This is going to be a quick one. The way weapon status effects work is you have, you know, the different type of arrows or, you know, tripwires or bombs or whatever that have the status effect on them. And when you shoot an enemy with it, see the bar that tries to, that starts to fill up? It does that with every different kind of status effect. Now I have some high level weapons, so you see mine takes like two hits a lot of times, but that's not always the case, especially when facing right. bigger animals and animals with dis different, sorry, not animals, robots with different weaknesses. <laughs> but make sure you know that if you just, because you shoot something with a flame arrow once, it's not going to start on fire immediately. Tip number four is you know you have all these sorts of quests the, the game has a lot of quests it doesn't have an over abundance of quests but you know it's got the main the side errands bandit camps um it has tall necks hunting grounds that you know you go to a specific area and then there's tutorials the last one at the bottom and these tutorials you get at the start when you get every when you get a new weapon every time you get a new tutorial and these tutorials give you a fair amount of experience points, especially early on, and as you see on mine, like these were both level eights. So these are low level. Definitely not something to ignore. Right. These are low level. There's a lot of experience at stake. Uh, they can help you level up early, and not to mention the fact that when you're actually doing these, you're killing machines, and therefore you, um, you're getting points from doing that. One thing to note, though, is you need to activate them, like I just did. So you activate the quest if you don't activate it it doesn't count so you can be tripping people with the shock wires and you can be um uh, rope you could you could be tying the rope to the machines and pulling them down you can be doing that all day but unless you equip the actual uh quest as if it's a real quest even though it's a tutorial you need to equip it and then you then do it and then you'll get the credit for it so that is tip number four all right, the next tip we have for you is a quick one, too. Um, the fast travel um, in Horizon is actually based on a consumable that you have to keep crafting if you want to keep fast traveling. 
um, you can actually purchase an infinite fast travel um, once you get to a certain point in the game. It's actually a little bit before you get to the city, but definitely by the time you get to the city. What you want to do is go to resources, and then it's the very bottom one. It requires 50 metal shards, a fox skin, and 10 fatty meat, so it's not that bad. You know, get it one time, right. you can fast travel as much as you want. Like Definitely it, worth it. It helps a lot with, especially uh, with, like, Nick's video, um, where he yeah. talked about unlimited shards. Like, it's good to I, that's, that's probably the most that I actually fast travel is when doing that. I don't usually fast travel right. otherwise, but yeah. So if you, if you want to exploit, or whatever you want to call it, if you want to kind of do different things in the game, it's good to have a... You know, it's good to have unlimited of the things you need to do that for. <laughs> All right, and the last tip that we have for you guys today is about weaknesses and strengths of different robots. I'm sure you've realized yes. by now that each robot has, you know, a specific weakness, as you can find in the, the notebook. A lot of them are fire, some are, you know, other stuff. But something that's almost as important, if not more important than that, is when you get up to the higher robots who have strengths. Right. Strength shock, strength fire, you know. And get the right weapon for the job, but they don't wear the right armor for the job. You know, if you're having trouble killing a robot that's weak to fire, but, you know, uses electric damage, then get an armor that you know, has electric resistance. That's why it's good to get so, all the armors. You don't have to change the armor non-stop, but it's good to have it so when you're, you know, it can make a big difference if you're having an issue with something. And there's certain parts and certain missions that it's just good, you know. All right, that has been some tips and tricks that we really think most people end up missing. Yes, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. Make sure you leave any comments if we miss something that uh, a different tip for trick that you think is important, which I'm sure we left some things out. So if you think there's something that's important, let us know in the comments below. And make sure you watch all our other Horizon Zero Dawn content. Uh, Nick has done a lot of work with it, and we got a lot of videos up already on it, and we're going to continue to do more very soon.